give a great round of applause to the Lord. Honor to God. Very well. Tonight, we're going to take our central text in the book of Judges, chapter 3, verse 12. Verse, chapter 3, 12 to 30. Judges, chapter 3, 12 to 30. We're going to read it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word of God says, Aob sets free Israel of Moab. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord straightened Eglom, the king of Moab, against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek, and he went and smote Israel and possessed the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer, Ehud, the, the son of Jerah, a Benjamite, a man left handed in by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. But Ehob made him a dagger, which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under the, his raiment upon his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had made an end to offer the present he sent away the people that bear the present but he himself turned against from the queries that were by jigal and said i have secret iran unto thee o king who said keep silence and all that stood by him went out from him and a hood came unto him and he was sitting in a summer parlor which he had for himself alone and a hood said I have a message from God unto thee, and he arose out of his seat. And Ehud put forth his left hand. How good is to be a left-handed? We need to have left-handed preachers. We need a message, not only motivate us, but only, not only saying that God is love, but God is judgment. Amen. And it said, and took, and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. And the hand also went in after the blade and the fat close up upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly and the dirt came out. Listen, this, this teaching of today is a bit criminal. Say with me, but the eternal has put it in the scripture, in the scripture to teach us something. It's 23, it says, then Ehud went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. When he was gone out, his servants came, and when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked, they said, Surely he covered his feet in his summer chamber. 26. It says, And Ehud escaped while they tarried and passed beyond the quarries and escaped unto Sariat. And it came to pass when he, he was come that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of, Inf, of Ephraim. He's speaking of Shofar. Shofar. And the children of Israel went down with him from the mount and he before them. And he said unto them, Follow after me, for the Lord hath delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him and took the forts of Jordan toward Moab and suffered not a man to pass over. Number 30 is interesting. So Moab was subdued 
that day under the hand of Israel and the land has had rest four score years. Lean your head down, we're going to pray. Father, we thank you for this time of revelation, of spiritual activity. Thank you, Lord, because your presence is here. Father, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, thank you because there are angels ministering here at all times. Thank you for this complete family that's here and for the ones who watch us through the social media. I ask, may your word be as a hammer to break the rock. May it produce seven blessings. May it break, may it break the, the roof of bronze and the and may your people go forward for the next seven months in the name of Jesus, Lord. We believe, we believe that this word is going to be a transferring of, of Herod. Inherit. Because we're because they're co heirs with Christ and the coming And it says that there's an acquired possession, that there's eternal life, and there's an acquired possession here on earth. I declare that after this, your people start prospering, going forward spiritually, emotionally, physically, in all areas, in the name of Jesus. And the church says, Amen. How many of you give a great round of applause to the word? Okay, my loved ones, we're in a time where we need to hear a word. Today we're going to be speaking, let's see if we have the flyer there, of the ruler of inactivity and spiritual fat. You can see that there, many spiritually are a bit overweight. But the Lord today is going to reveal you many secrets of his word. We need a word. Repeat, repeat. We need a word. Nowadays, something that the church doesn't have is a word. You go to a church, there are gifts. You go to a church, there's a good spectacular um, music band. There's everything that's can motivate your flesh but there's something something that they need is the word these days a young woman said to me apostle she said I want to move from my church and I said look young lady how important is if you if you go out of the church go and speak with the pastor and then the young lady said yes okay apostle i'm going to go and speak with the apostle with the pastor and she said pastor did you know that here it's like everything's dead like there's no life here it's like there we need word here i went to the apostle and in the apostle i found science i found a word it, it was like it's it's like God lives there and no, it no longer lives in your church. And she said that. And afterwards, the pastor got mad. What did they do? They washed your brain. I don't know what happened to do, but they did something to do. The only thing, since I stepped to, this pla to that place, my life was never the same. She said to, to, his pas to her pastor, so something that I understood is that we are not owners of the sheep. The sheep choose where they want to go. But something that the sheep during these times, the sheep, they eat grass. And the sheep, the sheep of the Lord, they eat delicate grass. It says in Psalms. So you cannot eat anything. You need to be prepared. After hearing the apostle, you're not going to eat anything else. 
So I don't know what's going to happen if the other churches are going to empty or what. Amen. Or the pastor needs to reform and they need to be, they need to do discipleship to his name. But it's urgent. The churches need word. Amen. Say word. Do, don't you notice how the ambience change? You're awakened spiritually. Well, this message, with this, I'm not motivating you to come out of your church and come here. No. But by the contrary, you can come here as a visit and go back again. But, but the Lord is the owner of the sheep. While you ask for permission to your pastor, everything's okay. But sometimes people want to change their institution. I, in particularly, change the church many times. These are times where the institutions of men are going to dry up. And where the Spirit of God isn't there, it's not going to no longer work. Do you understand? So I come to say that in this house, the pastor is the Holy Spirit. And while, while I have life, this institution is going to have life. While he's the pastor here, the success of the Lord is here. And what's the, what's the success? It's the word, the living word and cutting word. I've read in a complete text about Judges. The book of Judges is a, it's a following of the book of Joshua. This word is directed, if you read the whole context, the Lord reveals something. He shows that the son of Israel they did the wrong things before God's eyes and it says that because of that Jehovah straightened a ruler against them that had them captive for more than 18 years imagine being captured 18 years with a, a huge demon 18 years because of this ruler and it says that's permissive will of God when men determine to have lo the Lord in a second step and you say you can do as you wish but we see this case that Jehovah straightened Eglon Eglon means a, a small lamb. It says that Eglon was a very fat man or with overweight. I'm not referring to obesity, the physical obesity, but the spiritual obesity. Both things are not good. Both things show something that's not good. So, I refer to this, the spiritual obesity. It says that Eglon was a fat woman. He was overweight. Now, it's interesting that this man called Eglon, this small lamb, say a demon, a gibor, a ruler, had the people inactive without prospering. He had under a yoke of slavery, misery, poorness, without being important people in life, without having anything. This ruler had them as a slave until the people of the Lord started activating keys. So now I reveal who's Eglom. Eglom is the, is the ruler. It says in Ephesians, Chapter 6, 
chapter 10 and so on it says that our battle our battle say it to your neighbor you have a battle but you don't notice it our battle is isn't against flesh and blood it's not against the brother the neighbor but against rulers governments that operate in the heavenly places but but let's speak of the of the rulers that command the powers are in charge of the minor demons this eglon is the father is of the of gluttony of laziness let's take everything to the spiritual part because there are parallel things there's literal things that we're going to give example of we're going to take it to the spiritual world listen the church of jesus christ the prophets evangelist masters pastors of god are having we're the church is having a challenge a challenge you a father as a household you're having a challenge that you're not going for it's like there's a blockage it's like there's there's a spiritual force that doesn't let you go forward you feel slow it's like you go forward slower than others so something is wrong why because you have a glon over you it's the the ruler of inactivity and spiritual fat one once the first thing that happens is that you become slow if you used to run a mile now you run a bit you have lowered the amount you don't notice that we're in the end times. The church of Christ needs to be an answer. You need to go after the harvest. We need to win souls. We need to multiply the talents. We need to go forward. We need to take up territories. You that are here, you need to go for in all areas of your life to his name. But there's a spiritual strength that detains you. Sometimes you don't go up and suddenly... It's like the like the alarm clock came and there's there's like weight over you and it's hard for you to get up. That's an enormous ruler that's against you. And what's the function of the inactivity or the spiritual fact to kill your spiritual woman or men? fatten you us for you to not go to not go forward do you understand me before you being a body you're a spirit body and soul you need to understand something and i'm going to teach you you're eternal look at your neighbor and say you're eternal if you die today without christ you're going to hell and if you die with christ you go to heavens to live an eternal life you're gonna live forever or in or in heavens or in hell but you're gonna live forever but we need a left message it says that there was a there was a person that god lifted to set free we're this isn't a place where we're going to hide your sins it's uh, we're going to confront your sins the church is so tired of the pastor speaking of god is love because they're they're scared of losing the members something that i i've lost a long time is the filter i've lost losing that i'm a preacher without a filter i don't like going inside problems but the lord sets me into problems to his name look at your neighbor and say you didn't come to hear a preach that's gonna make you 
to accommodate yourself, but it's going to burn the fats, that excess that you have over life that doesn't let you go forward. You need to understand that you're, un you're eternal. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 says, it says before, before, before I formed you in the womb of your mother, before I gave you as a prophet, I knew, knew you before, before I sanctified you, I gave you as a prophet for the nations. Don't you notice that the Lord has done everything before, before, before he has given us as prophets, before he sanctified us, he's prospered us, before, before God has put you in the womb of your father, of your mother, she ha he has given you as a businesswoman, as an apostle, as a prophet, a person that's going to be important in life. How many of you say amen? Say, I'm a person that's going to mark a difference in this world. Now, an eternal person is a person that's spiritual. It's spiritual. I am. I was deposited in the womb of my mother. I was born. I got raised up. They preached the gospel with my complete errors. And the gospel removed the blindfolds. Repeat, the blindfolds. The blindfolds didn't let me see my, rea my reality. What's your reality? That you're eternal. There are many people that ask me, Apostle, what's my purpose? Your purpose, you know what it is. To, for it to be revealed to you what you were in the etern eternity. And you have to materialize it here on earth to go forward so that's why i don't believe in churches and pastors that are in the flesh why because they are completely wrong look at your neighbor and said it's going to be revealed to me my divine nature first of corinthians 13 12 there it says the whole chapter speaks of love it says Now we see as if in a mirror, we see it in a half. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then, but then say face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. So you see in part, it's not the complete thing that you are in the spiritual world. So if, you, if you're violent, the word of God says, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent, and the violent are the one that obtain. If you're violent, you're going to accomplish this. The Lord says, okay, Jose, oh, Bianca, oh, Tamara, I'm going to take, I'm going to, give you in a vision how you were known and how were you known say with me before before the Lord put me in the womb of my mother he has given me as a prophet before he has put me in the womb of my mother he said that I was a businessman I said that I'm a person that I'm, I'm going to go forward in this life how many of you say amen the Lord never planned a defeated destiny for you the thing is that you never had direction nor revelation to manifest that destiny here. How many of you give a great round of applause? Something that the Lord lost in Genesis 3 is the, the divine nature. This is what happened with Adam when he lost his divine nature, when he sinned. But there in the New Testament, the word says... It says that Adam was a soul, an animal soul, but our later Adam, that's Christ, is a spirit that gives us life. Say, we have the spirit of Christ within us, and one thing is that he's going to teach us all things, because that's the function of the Holy Spirit, to teach us all things. And among all those things is to teach you how you were known. 
Look at your neighbor and say, you're spiritual. I'm, you're not that, that bitter face that I'm seeing. You in the spiritual are that that prince, that princess, that queen, that priest, say that person that's going to go forward. So what's my task as a prophet? It's not to come to say to you stupid things, but to reveal to you what's your divine nature. That through Christ, if you repent of your sins, if you let the Lord wash you and start entering the things that's called a relationship with the Holy Spirit, it's going to be revealed to you. Amen. So say with me when the Lord says before I have given you as a prophet the Lord was speaking of the eternal that the eternal was eternity was going to invade the land. Say an object not identifies what's a UFO? Someone that's not from this earth. Look at your neighbor and say I came to Christ. Christ got revealed to me. The Spirit of Christ started to show me all things. But the, the first thing that started to reveal to me that I am a UFO. I'm not from this land. That is why Paul said, I'm an ambassador because Paul knew that his eternity, that what he, he was in the Lord was going to manifest in what he is. Because he knew where he was going to. To his name. Say with me, that's the purpose. So if you ask the apostle, what's my purpose? This is what I'm going to respond at you. If you ask the theologist, oh, sister, read the Bible. Amen. Because the theologist cannot explain this to you. Only a person that's full of the Holy Spirit. How many of you say amen? How many of you give a great round of applause to the Lord? If you read Romans chapter 8, chapter 19, it's interesting that there's a creation. Say there's a creation, the animals, the human beings. Say with me, the, the birds, the territories, your city, your neighborhood, your university, your school. The creation. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. But not of the son of not of the son of the of of God that's half flesh half spiritual creation earns for the eternal to manifest not the car carnal here you see the apostle here's what you see physically but ask the Lord to show you in dreams who I am Amen. You're going to see that man of God, who I am. How many of you are going to ask the Lord, who's that apostle? You're going to dream with me. Amen. I was in Argentina. I was going to minister and I fell asleep. I awoke and there was only five minutes to, for the service to start and I had to dress up it was tremendous and I didn't have the message nor nothing and I said why did you leave me to sleep I didn't understand I went by faith to the service there was like 1,500 people or more I reached a place and the Lord said I set you to sleep because I I removed your spirit from your body and he went to visit the whole people. And I said, how is that? Now you're going to ask the person who dreamt with you. Who did you dream? Who, who dreamt the apostle? I asked the people and it was the half of the people. 
And the Holy Spirit said to me, the service is done. Imagine the man of God coming out and entering the dreams of the people accompanied by the Holy Spirit. Say, my, my divine nature. These people want you to manifest. How many of you say amen? I'm, I'm speaking in deepness. The Pentecostal isn't going to tell you this. Only a person that has a communion with God. I'm taking you to there. I didn't bring you here, said the Lord, to lose your time, but to train your spirit and for you to start walking in a spiritual way. To his name. Point, point with the finger at someone and say, watch it because when I manifest myself, I visit you in your dreams. To his name. I started, since I move in that dimension, I understood that I don't have to fight with anyone. I start praying for them. Say with me, I'm more efficient I'm more efficient. No, where do I want to go? Eglom, say with me. The ruler of inactivity and spiritual fat, spiritual fat, what he does is he feeds you, it feeds your spirit, and what he feeds is it's not the word of God. He gives you how many Christians are here that are full of prophecy, but they never activated, they never moved in the prophecy? So what they did was fatten their spirit. And this spirit makes you be a distracted person. You kept on keep on seeing television at all times, right? You put the TV only. You see two men fighting here in Paraguayan channels. There are a lot of people fighting. Oh, you remove you took my my boyfriend and you with the family there eating right eating popcorn there oh how good they took they took the boyfriend and you're full of that garbage you're full of that garbage do you understand you're fat spiritual. You're not trained in the Lord. To his name. How many of you say amen? Do you you want to go to you want to go to war? You want to go forward. You will have to renounce to this spirit. He had 18 years captive of the people of Israel. Amen. And what was the initiative of all of this? There in Judges 3, 1 and 2, the word of God says that the people of Israel did wicked things before God's eyes. It says they did evilness before the Lord of the Lord. And he straightened Eglom. What's that? Being spiritually inactive. You need to be faster to come here to the church. We don't need to have as a custom not coming to church. There are many people that start eating. They don't do no longer do exercise. They start being lazy. Lazy. Your body starts to consume, 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 but say with me, it doesn't burn. He doesn't do exercise. So, when you eat, the fat is not bad, but if you exceed with it, you're going to end up bad. So where do I want to go? Everything that you do in excess, let's go spiritually. Watching TV, 
watching soap opera. There are people that watch soap opera. Come on, Uncle Lucas. Let's go to watch The Virgin of Guadalupe. And the whole family watching the soap opera. opera. And you're not searching for God. You're not wa searching for the Lord. Something's wrong in your life. So the Lord today, the Holy Spirit, say with me, is going to set me in a strong training. Now this Eglon was straightened by Jehovah, but he wasn't al alone. Amalek and Amor was with him. Two armies was were him with Eglon, and he had the people of of Jehovah, of God, captive. You know that Ammon, Ammon has many demons, legions of demons. He's the the ruler of the crimes. He's the it's the violence, the urban violence, street violence, and the spirit of Amalek. There's an, it's an astral spirit that governs the mind of the people of God. All these demons were over the people of, of Israel, oppressing them for 18 years. Say with me, behind my, my inactivity, my laziness, spiritual laziness, there are wicked spirits that are, that are ruling over my progress, my finances, and I need to do something about it. I need to awaken. The word exhorts us that we need to we need to awake from the dream. We cannot be passive during these times. Isaiah prophesies that the enemy will come as a river. But the spirit of the Lord will raise a flag. The spirit of Jehovah, it says in reality. Because the spirit of Jehovah is the, of the strategic war and the strategy that the Lord is giving you is to come go up and fight against the spiritual fat you need to be an active person how you need to exercise you need to go to the you need to enter into a spiritual diet and it says and and it says that the person that set them free had a had a knife at the left hand did you know that I became a surgeon during this time of Christians because I set, I cut with the knife up to the, the very end? You need to remove the fat from, the, from your head, from your ears, from your eyes. So that's why you need a left, a left message that, that's not only that God is love, God is love. We need a message that says to you that you're doing wrong. You need to obey more. You need to surrender more to the word of the Lord. People are so used to messages that are relaxing and motivational. These are times that we need, say with me, for the Lord to come with the left hand and to set the knife inside. The sterical came out. It says that I'll set the knife inside of a glom. This was the crime, but this was planned by God. And it's a spiritual teaching. You know why? To show a truth. It says that that garbage came out of him. Manure. Manure. Do you know what manure means? The extreme poverty in your life. Misery in high level. But if we don't hear the message that confronts us, God cannot clean us from that. If we accommodate ourselves only hearing what we want to hear, then we're wanting to win the kingdom of God in our way and not in the way of the Lord. How many of you gave a great round of applause to the Lord? Very well, something interesting. It says that this ruler took, 
took the city of the palm trees. There's a lot of truth in all of this. There are codes that we need to uncode. This ruler took the city of the palm trees, of the palm trees, repeat it with me. He see, Eglon seated in the palm tree city where there's inactivity, where there's no work, where there's no prayer, when there's no worship, when there's no effort, when there's no people that make an earth effort to come to church, there's no prosperity. The palm trees in the Bible were always the symbol of prosperity. The King Solomon says that had had on the walls of the temple palm trees, figures of palm trees. Why were the palm trees were in the walls? Because the it symbolizes progress of going forward, of prosperity. That is why the Psalm 92 says, 12, that the just will flourish like a palm tree and will, do you know what the palm tree represents? Growth, going forward. Say growth, going forward, it means, why aren't you growing? Why aren't you going forward? Because Eglon has positioned the territory of the palm trees over your life. All Christian, all Christian has the right to go forward. God doesn't have exceptions of people, but there are spirits like these that blo block your, block your the the blessings. And what do I do, Apostle? You will need to start burning. Amen. When we start hearing these type of messages, it exhorts us. It encourages us to pray to search for the Lord, to congregate. And the Holy Spirit starts burning the fire, the spiritual fats that you have inside. How many of you give a great round of applause to the Lord? It says that Deborah was under the palm tree. But it was it was among Rama and Betel. Say the palm tree is, is a sign of a prophetic field. It means the unction to take up the territories in business. How many of you say amen? It says that that palm tree was in Betel. Betel means the place where I, I'm never come forward. I never, I always go forward. It says that the palm tree was there and under was the judge. When, when someone is under the palm tree, one, one changes the mentality and you start understanding that you're judge. You also understand that you're seated in heavenly places with Christ. It's not judge by a sense. God is the only judge by a sense. But you have the power of the word. What I speak has a lot of power. Yes, but if it's, it goes with the word. It says that the people of Israel went under the palm tree to, to consult Deborah. It means creative ideas, going forward, projects, growth. Stay with me, being strong even in my elder years, because the palm tree is also compared with the long life there in Psalm 92. Even you will be fruitful even in your elder years. So people of elder peoples, I prophesy the unction of the palm tree at you. To his name. I give you a bit of the palm tree. Growth. Say with me. Growth. There in Song of Solomon, it compares with the... It says your breasts, your breasts are...
It says like your hips, your hips are like palm trees. Because God is a romantic God. But what did he say to the wife? Your hips are like your waist. Your waist is like a palm tree. The word of God says that Christ is coming for a glorious church. The religious there are smelling me as rotten. The misery has, misery has a bad spiritual smell. Look at your neighbor and say you're going to start going forward. After hearing this type of message, you're going to go forward. But listen, what did the principal, the ruler, Aglon, he took hold of that place. The people of Israel weren't growing to the sides. They were captive 18 years because this ruler took hold of the territory. This will be... This will be the answer of, I can't, there isn't, there is no. Because there's a principality, there's a ruler. Look at your neighbor and say, God is a God that can change your mentality if you want to. To his name. And today I'm prophesying with this word that many evilness is going to be burned and God is going to change your mentality and you're going to go forward in life how many of you say amen you weren't created for God to do to be a defeated person you were created by eternity to manifest that you're a businessman a prophet of the nation someone that's going to take up whole territory territories the son of God are asleep they don't have revelation. We need to start to educate our children, our youth, in prophetic language and apostolic language. So since now, it says, instruct the child since they're a small child. And when they grow, they're not going to set themselves apart. You need to teach them in the prophetic word. And those children, I assure you, that are going to stain you in during your senior years because the prophetic word that's most secure the word of God changes your chip your soft word it changes your mind and it changes your life how many of you give a great round of applause to the Lord so they were fattened spiritually 18 years Captive by Eglom, the territory of the palm tree were ta was taken. It means that they didn't have the possibility to go forward. They were in a state, emotionally, physical. They were in a defeated state. So the human being has a bad way of looking for God when when they're in when they go through hard situations when everything is goes bad oh I'm gonna go to the house of the father so the human being has a bad custom of searching for God when everything goes wrong so here in Judges chapter 3 Verse 15, it says that the people of Jehovah claim to Jehovah after being 18 years captive by this ruler. So they claim to the Lord. They activated a key. What did the Lord, what did the Lord say to Peter? To you, I give you the king, the keys of heavens and everything that you tied here in on earth will be tied in heaven. And everything that you untie here will be untied in heavens. Peter is a type of church today. The Lord gives me a key, keys that tie and untie. The Lord is giving me a keys that open heavens 
that shuts the heavens, that ties and unties, because everything that you tie here on earth will be tied in heavens, and everything that you untie here on earth will be untied in heavens. The key that the Lord gave to the people of Israel, and it's called, and they claimed to Jehovah. Claiming is more than praying. Only when things are very bad, that comes. Claiming, say, Father, help me. God, help me. I'm tired of this miserable life. That means claiming. All spirit, body, and soul, when the people claim. They were tired of the life that they had. They ripped the clothing. There's a key. I'm going to claim during these times. The people of, of the Lord. Chapter 3 verse 15. They say that the people claim. How good is God? He responds because God is, is love. When we claim, he responds. 18 years captive. God listen to his claim he brought the solution he he give gave them the person that will set them free and his name was aot listen you know what aot means the name of the freeder it means There's people to, that do not prepare because they don't have good contacts. It also means being aligned with correct people. And it, he was a Benjamin. He was the tribe of Benjamin. It means that Benjamin means who's the son of the of the left of the of the right. The the son of the right is Jesus Christ. It sees that Aot had an unction that's united. When there's people that's united, even though if you're a businessman, it's hard. When you're a pastor, it's hard to find a person, a person to have a good. It's a powerful union. Look at your neighbor and say, God is going to adopt you with as a good member during this time. You're not going to be member. You're not going to be member that see you as a mentality to remove but it's going to be like Joshua that will have a, a revelation there during your test when you're for you to go forward in the next seven years out means a union a powerful union something they something that's hard for me is to unite with other people because I know if I unite to someone or I I construct my success or my or my fall. It says that three pastors said, I'm, we're going to proclaim a revival. Let's join. I tell you this story. So if there are pastors here, do not get offended. So a man, a man pastor, we're going to unite. And, and what will it consist of? The first thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to tell our problems because we need to confess our problems. The first pastor confessed his problem. My problem is that I like women. And the other two pastors said, keep calm. God is going to forgive you if you repent. So another one came out and said, brothers, my problem is that I steal the tithes and offerings of the congregation. Oh, the Lord's going to forgive you. And the other one, and what's your problem, brother? My problem is that I tell everything. My problem is that I tell everything. So my loved ones, fighting a, a good member is so difficult. I come to prophesy Uh, finding a good partner is difficult 
they were partners. They used to move in codes. How many of you say amen? There wasn't gossiping there. There was a good society there. So it says that those those other boats came and Peter sh Peter shared with another one. You cannot you cannot give your blessings to someone that's going to betray you. These are seasons that I'm going to remove things. I'm going to remove money. And how is that apostle? You're losing time with people that steal your time. Remove money because you're giving money to where you don't have to give. To his name. Say it's the secret of prosperity to have a good partner. It says the word of God. Oh, the, the Amen Lord. It says, it, uh, the son of Geda. It's grain. Angels of prosperity. So, what God, with this, He imparted a deliverance, an unction. The son is like the father is. So if you have a leader that's a conqueror, the unction's going to be over you. Well, you know what happened? Aod came. He needed to set someone because this person was miserable. The people of Israel was tied under the mentality of a glom. In inactivity, without going forward, without progressing to his name. So people set this person free. Another characteristic of this person that he was a left, from the left side, he was the left side, he was from the left side. The word says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7, 16, that there's richness and honor in the left hand. How many of you say amen? Say with me, this man had a mentality of richness. Where are you going? To heavens that the religious had made up, the Pentecostal, or are you going to the new Jerusalem that the Bible speaks of? To his name. Say with me, there's a new Jerusalem where I'm going at, and that's manifesting little by little. Now that Jesus Christ coming is near, the first thing that it does, it changes your mentality through the Holy Spirit to his name it says that he was left-handed the left hand is richness and there's honor in the left and there's a lot of life on the right hand in the right hand of God there's a long life and in the left hand there's riches and honor these three blessings the Lord has for your life where did, where was the, this, this double-edged sword, where was it? It was in the left hand. This ruler had them in inactivity, in misery, but in, it says it with the right, with the left hand, Aop entered in the territory of Eglom. But something interesting, how many liked to receive presents, Raise your hands. They said to Eglom that they were going to, that the, the person was going to bring him a present, the present of, of being conformed. The present of being conformed. Never conform, my loved ones. Because sometimes when you reach something, when you're conformed, it says up to here. No, up to here. You don't have no need. More. God doesn't have more for you. Up to here. And it says, it offered him a present. He accepted a gloom. And later he said, listen, this is interesting. It says, Aop, he... Aop said to Eglon, I have a word 
of God for you. Say a word of God. Imagine what criminal mentality did Aob had. Imagine. Imagine if I say, Pastor Joaquin, I have a word of God for you. It says that that Eglo was in his his room with his with his legs crossed and and having people under the yoke. Everybody wants to hear prophecy. Everybody when this principality, this ruler feeds with of prophecies that will never come to pass. And how is that? There are prophecies that are sovereign. There, but there's other conditional prophecies as well. For example, God said, I'm going to prosper you. I'm going to take you forward. You're going to be the best in your studies. Those are conditional prophecies you need to study. You need to work that prophecy for an all for to for it to be worked. The brothers usually the brothers go and attack the the prophets. The brothers go and attack the prophet when they don't accomplish something. Didn't I tell you that you need to put effort in all in order? to be blessed because sometimes the Lord tells you the blessing but he doesn't tell you the process how many of you say amen so we see here that the Lord we see here that this Aob said I have a word for, of God for you and when he entered what was the word he said the spirit of spiritual fat Aob entered and he re and removed it says that he had the knife and he cuts he stabbed he stabbed it unto completely he stabbed the knife completely and something that's interesting here that's powerful is it says the word of god 17 and it says the present he gave the present and after giving the present he had he said goodbye to the persons that, that brought the present. And it says when he stabbed them, it says that it says that the manure came out. The manual, the manure. It says that the muck, the muck came out. And we need to stab, we need to take the muck out of What's the muck? It's there are things that are muck in your life. A lot of soap operas, a lot of joining people that are not convenient, having bad partners, seeing pornography, having acted bad attitudes in types instead of worshiping. You complain, say a muck. You know what, what muck is for the angels of heavens? It's pure muck. The angels see gossip and your and you know how they see it. They see it like a muck. How many of you say amen? Say today many muck is going to flow and we're gonna kill a gloom. We're going to kill that spirit of inactivity in your life and you're gonna start burning the spiritual fat. How many of you give a great round of applause to the Lord? Who is God speaking to? Listen. The muck is the worst thing that there is. It says when in the conquering of Samaria, when Elisha entered, there was hunger there. There was a judgment by God. It says that two women said, kill 
killed your child, killed your child, and we will eat it today. And tomorrow, I killed my child, and I will, and we are going to eat it tomorrow. And it says that they ate. It says that one day, they killed one of the children, and the next day, the second woman went out running. It says in the book of Kings that by four pieces of silver, it says that that muck was sold. What does this represent, my loved ones? What does muck represent? The extreme misery, extreme poorness, poverty. It says that Moses, when you go, Moses, when you go to the bathroom, cover your muck, but, and you're going to remove it from the camp for it not to co contaminate. It says that the muck, the muck is something that's not good. Do you know what he, God thinks of your pornography life, of your gossip life, of your not normal, of your fleshly world in that world? In that world that you, he seems it as a muck. God loves you, but he detests the, the muck. Are you understanding something that's a waste in your life? Everything that has you fattened. We all need money, but, it's, but there's people that have love of the money. They stink. They have wastes, adultery. Today the Lord showed me. Today the Lord showed me in a vision. There's I got many people that are. There's a man, a father of a household that went to see his lover, and after seeing his lover, the father went went to the family. And look how hi this hypocrisy, and he's even a Christian. Today you need to profit, apostle, let go of a message, a left hand, because these people are com contaminated with muck. How many of you say amen to his name? Say with me, the Lord is setting me. It says that the 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 bitch called Jezebel the dogs ate him ate her and the body of Jezebel was left as a muck muck he compared her body her dead body as a muck amen so if there's a if there's a Jezebelic brother or sister look at your neighbor and say you're a muck for god that we what do we need to do Are you understanding, my loved ones? How many of you say amen? What moral does a man or woman that has a lover have that has... that likes a shopping? What moral does it have to have that look to look good? To look good in television or by saying something against a man of God, knowing that she has two lovers, you need to find someone as a man with a man of God to confront her, saying, You need to repent because you're going to hell. How many of you say amen? <laughs> to his name. Who lives? To his name. Look at your neighbor and say, Today the Lord is setting the knife inside of me with the left hand. It, it stinks. I imagine it. He, he, he was even in his comfort room. In his summer room. How many of you... Give a great round of applause to the King of Glory.
do we stop or do we continue? Judges 3.27, it says, then when the, when the ruler was killed and when he entered, he touched the horn at the mount of Ephraim and the people of God descended with him. And it says, follow me because the Lord has given to your enemies, the Moabites, your hands. It says that after killing Aob, after Aob killed Eglom, it says the prophet that he lifted went up to the mount. Say with me. Hold fast if the prophet takes your name up in the mount. I have a few written to to his name bring me my shofar please how many of you say amen it says that the prophet went up in the mount this is in the witch the name in the neighborhood it says that he went in the Ephraim mount it's the same hebrew significant uh, it it means meaning it means to fructify but it's not the Ephraim that you know. Ephraim means to be fruitful, fruitful, prosperous. Where did the prophet go? To the Mount of Ephraim. And he touched the shofar. He sounded the shofar. In the Mount of Prosperity, he activated ministering spirits. They were captive by misery. But when he sounded the shofar... When he sounded the shofar, raise your hands. <laughs> Listen, when he sounded the shofar in the Mount of Ephraim, immediately angels were minister, went to minister the people of God that were captive for 18 years. They touched the people of God and there was an awakening. Today the Lord say, awaken you that sleep and Christ will shine on you. When there was that awakening, he gave an order and they all went to conquer, to battle and to go out forward. And that land that didn't have rest, rested for 80 years to his name. I come to prophesy to you that you're going to enter a rest. How many of you say amen? Maybe the death doesn't, didn't let you sleep. Maybe it didn't let you rest. Maybe. Maybe the problem stole your dreams. But the Lord says, I have seasons of rest for you. How many of you say amen? What does it say? It said 80 years. It rest. They rested. Say, eighty years. They rest. The land rested. The word rest comes from the word sab sabbath, shabbat, or number seven. Say, there's a seven for me. Many persecutions that they were going through. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil got lifted against me, but that only marks. A sign that God has a Shabbat for me. How many of you say amen that God has a rest for me? Glory I give to God that I'm in his house. The, the sound of the shofar is from the Mount of Shaheed. And God started to activate an angels that are going to start to take me forward. I don't know if you're believing it. I see businessmen that are lifted here. I see men and women of business that are being lifted. How many of you say amen? How many of you say amen? Stop saying, I don't have a job. I don't have. Stop saying that. 
because you will have a job until you die. That is why the word of God says in Revelations, and you will rest of your job, all of you who who serve the Lord, because the people who are in Egypt have an employment, but the people who are in the Lord have a job. I'm not an employer of the devil, I have a job. And if I have a boss, I have a job. If I have a business, I have a job. How many of you say amen? Look at your neighbor and say, there are days that are coming that, that God is going gonna, is gonna to potential my mind. So stop saying that you don't have, that you can't. Amen? I give you a few problems and I seal this word. They're in Leviticus. First of Leviticus 4.31. Leviticus first, it says that the priest all morning lighten the fire at the altar. You're a priest. You're king and a priest. You're a spiritual priest. And every, every time he lightened the fire, he needed to put there. the firewood and each time God, the Lord wanted him to put the fat here there in Deut Deuteronomy it says okay so why did you become fat I gave you everything but you fattened your heart and you went towards your idols Jesus, you, these are times that you need to lower your spiritual fat and you need to present your prayer in the fire of the Holy Spirit all day there needs to be word from God and the fat every morning you will need to have a habit to repent of your sins of everything that's wrong how many of you give a great round of applause to the eternal <laughs> Proverbs 6.12, Proverbs 6.12, it says, Proverbs 24, 24, Proverbs 24, with this we're going to close. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. People who are sluggard, it's because there's climate. There's people that have climate reasons that they don't go to work. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. The sluggard in, the, in winter doesn't go out to work. But has a bad habit to, to, to claim when there's the harvest what you want next year you need to you need to work in it this year how many of you say amen i think the amends are lowering here to his name this is the year that you need to you need to you need to sow <laughs> you need to sow with tears in the lord for the next year to reap with joy but but having but becoming fat all year isn't good it is it isn't good look at your neighbor and say it is not good you're not good to see the heart of it in in the time because god isn't going to bless how many of you say amen proverbs chapter 6 verse 9 How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth as they want as an armed man. It says slumber. 
a bit of staying at home, crossing your feet, only a, a little time of relax, like a glom han. He was in his summer room. You know what the Lord says? The spirit of poverty is going to come as an armed person, a strong man, poverty. Are you understanding? So the first thing that we're going to break today is an inactivity. Say, inactivity, inactivity, get out of my life. Who told us that you're old? Who said that you do not, that you're useless? Even though you have life, you have the strength to do the will of God, to work. How many of you give a great round of applause? Who lives? 23. Verbs 20. Proverbs 23 20. With this we end. Be not among wine bibers, among righteous eaters of flesh. For the drunken and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall cloth a man with rags. How many of you say amen? Do I say it or does the word say it? Is the apostle saying or is it the Lord? How many of you say amen? Keep calm, sleep the whole month. Because the prophet said that for... Yes, because the the blessing is coming on November. It This is believing that the cows fly. It will never come. A bit of sleep will make you dress with broken cloth there are preachers there are pre preachers nowadays that preach with rot with with broken with broken cloth this will be a fruit it's going to be fruit that I convert into a person, a work, a workman in this life that I put effort. How many of you give a great round of applause to the Lord? Repeat. We tie the strong man today. We tie it in the name of Jesus. How many of you have dreamt with mocks? Come down here. Come, come here running. I imagine that this happened with Aot went inside and put stabbed the knife at Eglom. Raise your hands. Today we spoke of food of the heavens. Raise your hands and start praying. Say, Lord, in this moment, I thank you for this word, for this revelation, for this teaching, for this science in the name of Jesus, for the blood of Jesus. I receive this word. Today I set it under my feet. I set the inactivity, the laziness, the spiritual fat under my feet of what doesn't let me go forward I put it under my feet I know that I can more because your word says that I can with Christ and that straightens me if I won 500,000 word anis I'm gonna win 1 million if I won a percentage tomorrow I'm gonna win more I put myself a goal in the name of Jesus I'm not conformed. Forgive me if I got conformed. Forgive me if they teach me wrong to conform in this life. In the name of Jesus. I ask Lord for you today to give me spiritual weapons in order to come forward in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you give a great round of applause to the Word? Amen. Let's ask the people to connect to Zoom. Connect to Zoom. We're going to pray for your life.
How many dreamt a bit of fat people? How many of you dreamt with fat people? Raise your hands. Okay. Did you tell us your dream? I had a I had a dream that I fattened a lot and I had a belly and then I wanted to cross a place and I couldn't. What did the Lord Jesus say? The way to the salvation, people that are fattened do not enter. That's the, the place of salvation, but you need to forgive that man. You need to forgive that man. I think it's your husband. This person, it's your partner. No, in reality, it's a person that practiced black magic. I served in the church, Advent, Adventist church, but then I got cold, and then I became a partner of the of a person that practiced black magic and some and many times he presented in my dream as a ruler and he ruled my life and he ruled a lot of years just as you preached it i just saw a, an angel raise your hands the lord says i'm going to remove the dominion of the and immediately immediately you're going to lose weight come out in the name of jesus father i thank you you burn that witch in which she partnered with you have revealed to me this teaching that there will be signs and in the name of jesus you come out that's the spirit my loved ones amen I'm going to tell you something. You can say anything about me, but not about the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Come here, daughter. Come. Raise your hands. What did 